What's going on guys? We're going to do a little bit of a different video today. We've been settling in to the brand new Naboo raid, the battle for Naboo. Over the last couple of weeks now, we've had a couple of weeks here where we've get to test it and see how it's getting on. Don't mind me, I'm just putting on my GAC in the background to see what my opponent's doing as far as attacks are concerned. You can check out the live stream of this, it's up on my channel at the moment. But anyway, I wanted to have a little bit of a chinwag, a little bit of a chat about my thoughts on the Battle for Naboo raid and what I actually feel now that we've had the time to get to grips with it and understand what is actually involved, what's required from us and how does this how does this impact us in the long run and what does this mean for future raids? I know that's a lot to try and get off all together, but I just wanted to try and get my thoughts out into the ether and hopefully get a little bit of response from you people at home to understand how do you guys feel about the raid? It's very easy in Galaxy of Heroes to sort of find yourself in a situation where you're just sort of chatting with your peers and you only get the perspective of other people in your guild or other people that you just happen to hang out with instead of getting an idea from the gamut of the player base. Everybody from different GP brackets, different sort of uh, guild enthusiast or raid enthusiast to those people that are just completely not bothering with the raid and that sort of thing. So if this can turn into a bit of a forum, you guys let me know what you think. I can let you know what I think. That would be just great. Now, I'm not putting a whole lot of stock in this video. I'm just trying to have myself a good time and have a chat with y'all. So first and foremost, I guess I kind of want to say the good things about the raid first. I want to get that off my chest and see where do I think CG got things right for this new raid? And there's a couple of things, right? When we came off from the speeder bike pursuit raid, there was immediate dislike. And it feels like oftentimes CG gets immediate dislike no matter what they do, right? The problem with the speeder bike pursuit raid, in my opinion, was multifold. One, it was dull, right? It was kind of boring. It was kind of boring. Nobody really wants to be running around on a speeder bike. So running around, driving around on a speeder bike, shooting at unknown enemies with some obscure goal in mind to just have the enemy crash into a tree. Like, there's no payoff there, right? There's no big bad. There's no like, oh my God, that was amazing. It's just no... You don't even get to use the abilities of the characters that you're taking in. It, so it didn't, it almost felt like it doesn't matter what you do and who you use, right? So there was very standardized, normalized, and basically the raid was figured out in about a week. It was a case of you've got Galactic Legend Leia Organa. She has a solo run. Everybody else, you mod exactly the same. You have an Imperial Trooper. You have evasion mechanics. You stack up that evasion. You do stupid amounts of damage with your Imperial Troopers. That was the whole raid. It was dull, it was boring, and it had a lot of characters that, you know, were easily accessible and stuff like that. So that was the bad thing about the new raid, uh, the old raid, speeder bike pursuit raid. The things that they did well, of course, were that runs were relatively quick. It was a very easily accessible group of characters for use there that a lot of people had. So it was accessible to the entire player base to at least start scoring some amount of points in, right? Conversely, when we look at the new Battle for Naboo raid, it's almost the polar opposite. You know, I, I guess we'll just throw in as well at the end, there, there were some players, there were some players in the Speeder Bike Pursuit raid that just could not get over the rolling backgrounds and they had motion sickness associated with it. Now, I wasn't one of those people, but I hear people in my Discord, I see people inside my, my comment section on my videos that are actually saying, yeah, you know what, this gave me motion sickness, I don't like it, I physically can't sit there and play it. If that's the case, then, you know, CG really should have addressed that. So moving on to the Battle for Naboo raid, it's always exciting for me when we get a new raid because you usually they are sort of, you know, it gives, gives us something new to sink our teeth into, something new, something interesting. We get to figure out what works, what doesn't work. I get to make videos on it. I love making videos, guys. That's why I'm doing this. This is why I do this. I enjoy creating videos, okay? So having that opportunity with a brand new raid is always cool. I like that, right? So what did, what did CG nail? as far as I'm concerned, for the battle for Naboo. The first thing I'll say that they did really well was actually the aesthetic. The aesthetic of the raid is actually kind of cool. When I first saw the Sector 3 boss of the Queen Amidala conquest, which was waves of B1s with a goddamn crate, you know, like just a blue crate in the middle, I was petrified that the raid was basically going to be that. Boring background, green rolling fields, 
you just defeat a wave of droids and then another wave of droids replaces it and another wave of droid replaces it and another wave of droid replaces it and that's it until the end of time until you fail you perish you get overthrown or you run away that was the sector 3 boss i am so happy that when we got the raid released that it looked so much better we managed to get a nifty opening intro we got some really smooth transitions to going up into fleet we also had a nice exit intro or outro sorry for when you complete the raid so it felt like there was like there was there was at least a little bit of production value that went into it it wasn't just b1s we did have droidicas and staps i'm still a little bit disappointed that there wasn't a sort of big boss like we didn't get to fight an aat or one of the you know carrier tanks that carries all the all the b1s and stuff like that that would have been nice if that was the final wave to go ahead and you know take one of them out that would be kind of cool it would feel more of a payoff than just fighting b1s and droidicas and stuff like that but that's a minor nitpick for me from from a, a gameplay perspective right so i feel like the aesthetics were cool we have that shield generator dome over us that was kind of nifty we actually see the droids walk through that shield and they sort of they, 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 their motion, it sort of slows down as they come through. It's a nice little touch. Now, of course, aesthetics are not the only thing that really matters when it comes to, is something good? So when it comes to the gameplay perspective, I'm a little bit torn. The good things that I like about the gameplay, and this is very different to what we had in the Speeder Bike Pursuit, is that every single team that you take in feels me mechanically different and requires a slightly different approach in order to succeed. Which I think is, they've done a really good job, in my opinion, of making them feel like they ha you have to take a unique approach to each, right? So you look at the Queen Amidala trio, it's all about trying to set up a nice big AoE with Padawan Obi-Wan, make sure he's got, you know, some heal over times, make sure he's got that advantage, time the attacks, time when you use your specials, try to set it up with Master Qui-Gon Jinn's second special to give Padawan Obi-Wan an additional 30% offense before he uses his AoE. That's kind of cool. Compare that to the Gungans, which is you hit auto and win because they're so good in the raid. And you compare that to a Luminara team where you have to try and stack up heal over times with potency ups in order to do massive amounts of true damage to the enemy team. Compare that to a Keller and Beck team, which is all about swapping turns back and forth with Cam, getting him to one shot individual units every time. And then you compare that to a Darth Maul-led Sidious team, where all you're trying to do is slowly ramp up your crit, uh, well, your your um, your physical damage, so that eventually you're AOEing entire fields. You're killing enemies with basics from Maul to get a bonus turn, essentially, or a hundred percent turn meter, over and over again. They did a really good job of making those teams feel like their own individual teams. Completely different from the speeder bike raid, where we had Leia, we had. Imperial Trooper or Empire character with another character with evasion mechanics and then maybe if you really wanted to you'd have a side swipe team that could potentially do a little bit of work in the raid. So that part pleased me because it wasn't just a br uh, like a brainless oh my god well I guess we just apply this mod set to all five of our teams we go in and we do the exact same thing. So it's, it's a little bit different and I've got to tap my hat off to them for that. That was good work. That was good work. Unfortunately, now we do have to think about what are the bad things, because my good list for this raid is very short. That's all they get. They get aesthetics of the raid, looks pretty, and they've done a good job in making the teams feel and play different, which is fun, keeps me, me from going insane. The bad parts, though, kind of outweigh that good part. The bad parts for me, and I'm not a negative person here, I just want to be critical of the raid in general, so that we can hopefully provide some CG feedback some feedback to CG. I can English, guys. I've got an English degree. <laughs> Don't at me, bro. Anyway, in the uh, in the in the spirit of being critical about the raid, the bad parts are pretty bad. One, there is way too much RNG in this raid. They've baked in in RNG in a number of ways. One, the units have more or less the same speed, and they've got. Um, mechanics within their kits that let them gain additional turn meter and call assists at random and stuff like this, right? And what that does is it means the player cannot replicate exactly any scenario at any time, right? Because turn orders will be slightly different. There's also RNG baked into the command droid's unique ability. 
they gave them two. One of them is called Quick, I believe, and that gives them, um, lets them generate turn meter when you generate turn meter, and lets them heal protection and health whenever they attack out a turn or something like that. Can't remember, it doesn't even matter. Yes, I've got a bunch of raid videos. You can check out the playlist linked in the description down below. Um, and then they've got the charge mechanic, which is the other one. Now, bosses or the waves after the first two waves will randomly assign one of those two, um, one of these two special abilities to the command droid. So that RNG is baked in. Now, the charge mechanic, in my opinion, is awful. It's terrible. It is like run destroying. What the charge mechanic does is essentially after every one of the player's turns, a random unit on the enemy team will take a bonus turn. So it's a ra it's another there's the the RNG around, you know, what special ability does the commander droid provide everybody? Then there's RNG around if it's the charge mechanic, who gets the bonus turn? And that can completely ruin runs because it could go to a droidica and droidica will get damage immunity and you can't get rid of it for a certain number of turns. Or it could go to the command droid and the command droid will strip off all your buffs and completely ruin your damage output on your Luminara team, for example, or on your Padawan Obi-Wan team, for example. And that bonus turn mechanic as well, if it comes out in the later waves, it means that a bunch of the enemy takes a bunch of turns and then they generate a bunch of turn meter and then your enrage meter is completely shot. I don't mind raids being difficult, but I, do, I feel, and I feel like I'm not alone here, the player shouldn't have to suffer a loss because of RNG rather than because they played the raid incorrectly. You know, if you are playing correctly and RNG is just getting in your way, that's very frustrating. Now, if you combine these RNG elements with the fact that each run can take six to ten minutes long to complete, if that RNG factor is dialed in so heavily like it is now, it means that sometimes players can spend, and I joke not, several hours trying to get their runs done if they want to try and max score. And unfortunately for a lot of people, and I can completely understand this, their enjoyment levels of running the raid is going to diminish rapidly if they feel like they are getting cheated out of a win. And that's just not fun. It's just not fun. And this is ultimately a game and people play a game for either masochistic reasons, and let's face it, we're all masochists here, or to enjoy themselves and get away from the humdrum of everyday life. So in my opinion, if these runs weren't taking six to 10 minutes long, if they were taking like 75 seconds long, 60 seconds long, I don't mind if there's RNG, that means I have to run the raid five times or 10 times. But if the run is six to 10 minutes long a time, and then you add in RNG and I have to run it an additional five to 10 times on top of that, and I'm end up spending two to three hours trying to complete a raid, that is not an enjoyable experience for the player. We spend enough time as it is doing things like TB and Conquest and going through GAC and stuff like that, we do not need extra hours of time spent running through the raid. So that's my first bit of feedback for CG. Let's tone down slash completely remove the RNG, okay? Secondly, time consuming as well. We really do not want a high level of, of time consumption with this raid. I don't mind if I have to spend half an hour to an hour doing my raid runs once every six days. That's okay by me. Of course, your mileage may vary depending on your position for the raid. The last thing that might be a little bit of a personal use case for me is when this raid was coming out, they announced that we were getting a new tier of difficulty that will allow us to score higher points. We got the Relic 9 tier, which has never existed in a previous raid. So you could go in with a Relic 9 team, you can get an extra 900,000 points on the top end. You can get 3.6 million for a single team run instead of 2.7 million, which is great in context. It's like, okay, yeah, cool. It means we can, we can more easily get the top end rewards and stuff like that. And that's very well and good. The problem is, is they didn't adjust the raid rewards to be commensurate. Relic 9 is still incredibly difficult and out of reach for most players to obtain. I am a late game player, I'm, I would call myself very late game, broaching on end game player at this point, and I've got about 18 or 19 Relic 9s. And that is more than most players in the game. It's probably more than 99% of the players in the game. And for most people, they're not going to look at this raid as an opportunity to spend three Relic 9s when they don't have Leviathan and they don't have Profundity and they don't have 
Galactic Legend of Sokotano that's coming out soon. So if that goal was to just entice the end game players, they're further narrowing the scope of this raid to a smaller player base, right? Or they're trying to incentivize people to spend more money. Now, the problem with this for me really comes down to the fact that they did say originally that alongside this Relic 9 tier to score more points, they will also be introducing a new tier of reward boxes greater than what we had before. So that is an incentive for that one specific sect of players that are really going to be investing in high level teams. That is something to tell them, hey, look, yes, you've invested in Relic 9, so you can easily hit the max box reward or more easily hit the max box reward for your guild. But we've also added an additional carrot on a stick over here for you to keep stretching and keep going from even more levels of investment to earn even greater rewards. For some reason, and I don't think there was any real communication about why they've done this, they just removed that entirely and haven't spoken about it since. Now, from what I could see, I believe I took a look, and it was offering an extra 2,000 Mark III currency for those guilds that hit that top end. And whilst that's nice, even if it came in, I don't even know if I would try and push for that. It is nice, but Relic 9 is such a high-level investment for most people that I, it, it feels like it needed something else. And I feel like that little something else that is missing from this raid is just a slight change to the reward structure. I feel like CG does need to start introducing more events, and they've done this very gingerly, more events that will give us things like signal data. Signal data is like gold dust in this game. It is so valuable, it is precious, and you need to be very uh, conservative about where you actually spend it. We are in this great drive at the moment to try and get as many characters up to high relics as we possibly can, and we're very, very limited in our means of accessing signal data. Most of it comes through just daily cantina farming. If they were to introduce just a bit of signal data into each of those guild reward boxes or personal reward boxes, then I would feel a little bit better about this Relic 9 tier not having an additional Relic 9 box for the guilds. It just feels like something is missing. CG is asking us for more investment, high, uh, a drastically higher level of investment. Relic 9 is no joke without actually giving us anything extra in return. It's just, oh, you're able to hit that max box a little bit easier. Now, I will say that they did release the Duel of the Fate Salt Battle, which is incredible and does hit a number of those points. You get Gerda keypad, keypads for one. That's one of the random items that you can get in the Relic 9 tier. You also get signal data and relic materials and all this sort of good business. And that is fantastic. And it really does encourage characters and players to invest in these brand new characters like Padawan Obi-Wan and Master Qui-Gon Jinn. And I recommend everybody do that. But why wasn't this part of the raid reward structure? Why didn't we get it there? even if it was at this new box tier or however they wanted to disseminate it. I do feel like that it, this is a missed opportunity from CG. One final thing is my recommendation on how CG should potentially or could potentially change this to make it a little bit more player friendly. First and foremost, let's dumb down that RNG. Get rid of the charge mechanic entirely. If you want to introduce something else, bring in something else that's not nearly as detrimental to a run. I don't mind it making the enemies hit more I don't mind them having slightly more speed, but making them more survivable and having them take boatloads of additional turns and adding additional layers of RNG to further confuse is not an enjoyable experience for the player base. Let's go ahead and get rid of that and bring in something that actually makes the gameplay more fun rather than something that frustrates. You don't want frustration, you want enjoyment. Secondly, what I would like to see is I would like to change the way that they interact with the fleet. It's very cool when we get to go up into the st into the starship and we get a little bit of an animation, we take down various elements, okay? So, you know, you can disrupt the communications for that run and then it gets rid of the commander droid's unique ability for that, for that wave of battle, right? How about this? Instead of having it just be once every three rounds, you go up into ships and then you do one move and it does something for that wave and you move on, change it to an alt meter, similar to how Leia was in the previous raid. You hit ultimate, ultimate lets you choose when to activate to go up into fleets. So you could save it if you want. If you have a wave and you're like, oh, it's not the charge wave, I don't mind, I'll save this for now, I'll do it later. Or it's an early wave, you're like, I don't want to use this wave three, I'd rather use this on wave five and then six and then seven. Let us save it and use it at our discretion. Secondly, if you want to keep the charge mechanic in there, 
make the abilities like Disrupt Communications permanently remove that ability for the rest of the raid. If that is deemed too strong, then change the abilities of the fleet mechanics to give us permanent bonuses throughout the battle. That's how it should work. If you've destroyed the communications tower up in the Trade Federation capital ship, why would that only work for one turn? It should be for the rest of the raid because it is still destroyed. You've destroyed ships, you know, you've done all this sort of business. Give us permanent buffs so it feels like as you are progressing through the raid, you yourself are getting more powerful. You are getting... You are, like, rolling that momentum forward to perform better in the raid. You know, it, it feels like the actual ebb and flow of a battle. Yes, the enemy is sending more droids at you, but you now have added permanent bonuses, more similar to what we see on, like, the Zepho bonus missions. The Zepho bonus planet... Uh, combat missions, you know? You go in there, you've got that unique ability that you can apply that lets you ramp up mastery and you can get three stacks of it and then it goes to the whole team. Do something like that. Make it feel like we are gradually getting better rather than, oh, I'm just using this ability for this one turn that might help me out against this particular comp. Make it feel fun and engaging. Let us choose to be able when we want to activate that. Give us a little bit more autonomy, I feel. I think with those two things, the raid would be a heck of a lot more enjoyable for the player base. The last thing that I would suggest, and I think this is more aimed towards the early player base experience, is it feels right now, from what I've heard from, you know, my communities and other content creator communities, is that the early game rosters are having a very hard time scoring any points at all. Just because the lower tiers are far too difficult to actually score any points. So my recommendation there is either for CG to to taper that difficulty just a little bit easier on the lower tiers so that players can actually engage. Maybe just remove all the command droid bonuses in totality from the early dro like the literally the bottom tiers so people can at least start going in and getting a couple of hundred thousand points in this raid or create a tier even lower that is just very easy and only offers maybe a maximum of a hundred thousand points if you full clear. Just let players from all skill points and all roster developed points actually engage with this raid and start earning some rewards because it's very disheartening to a player if they cannot do anything at all because there's too much recovery on the enemy team they have to wait until they've got some relict characters anyway that's my thoughts guys i know i've rambled on here for about 20 minutes and probably made no real sense this is just a different sort of video where i'm just trying to get my thoughts out into the ether and garner a little bit of feedback from yourself. So I would really, really appreciate if you just took the moment to go to the comment section and let me know what your thoughts are about the raid and try to be critical about it. Don't just yell, this raid is trash. I hate CG. Fire and pitchforks. If not, maybe just leave your favorite emoji so I can, you know, have a good time. Anyway, guys, until the very next video, peace out and may the force be with you.